Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to a new video with me, Fastball40. As always, if you are new around here, subscribe down below, click the like button, all that good stuff. It is massively appreciated. Um, and if you want to watch me try, trade, do stuff live, just get involved with the community in general, then make sure you click the link down below and come over to Twitch where I live stream pretty much every single day from 4.30pm. Uh, make sure you get involved in that. If you've got questions, queries, concerns, or you just want to have a good laugh and join one of the fastest growing FIFA communities out there, then click the link down below and come over to Twitch. Before we get into this video, I want to talk to you guys about foottrading.co.uk. That is a website set up by myself and V273, where we brought together our knowledge of the market into one place. Um, essentially, there are three areas on here where you can learn to trade. These are trading guides here. Anyone can use these. Um, they teach you how to trade with special cards, silver cards, icon cards, all that stuff. A subscription on the website is £10 a month, and that gets you access to buying prices. These are updated continually. A new update went live today. This includes prices for special cards. It includes prices for silvers which yesterday was massively profitable. I made about 250k of silvers last night alone. Um, and icon cards, so that's literally that guarantees you cannot make a profit if you're buying at those prices. Um, and if you get a tier two subscription, that gives you access to the live deal section of the website, which is where three or four times a week we're gonna be posting deals that you guys can basically go and pick up and make big profit on them. All these guys here were, were listed up in the last sort of couple of days. We're just testing that phase out at the moment. That will be going live in the next week or so properly. For reference to you guys, it's £10 a month for a tier 1 subscription, £15 for a tier 2, it's half the price of most Patreons, and we've got guys over in my um, Discord, we've got these 600 people in there, if you want to join by the way, completely free to join. We've got guys in my Discord who have made over a million coins this week just by using this website. So if you want to get involved, please do click the link down below and go over to foottrading.co.uk. But this video essentially is my sort of part 2, I guess, to the special card trading video that I put out earlier in the week. It did brilliantly well for views, you guys really enjoyed it. But a lot of you had other questions, so I wanted to bring a video out to answer your questions specifically. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is with special cards, essentially is why we trade with special cards with Hunters and Shadows. And the reason we do that is because Hunters and Shadows have an added value that people don't realise is there. That's the first thing, okay? So people say, I don't know, let's say, for example, I Kante up there. Kante is not a very good example because he's more expensive. You don't want to trade with too expensive, but... For example, say Kanto is selling for 130 on the market, or we'll say even less than that, say 100k on the market. But with the Shadow, he sells for 112k. People still list that Kante for 100k. They don't realise that the Shadow and the Hunter gives it that added value, so they list it at the same price as he normally is selling for. We go and pick those deals up, and we list them for what they should sell for. And that's where the difference comes in, and that's where your big profit can be made. Some people even undercut what they're currently selling for with a shadow of a hunter on them, which means the undercut money, to say his Kante was selling for 100k and he's undercut at 90, you're making 10k profit straight away just from the fact that he actually sells for 100. You're also then making profit for the, to, to allow for the shadow card, which means you're making 15, 20k off that. So that's why we do it. I want to show you the filters so you know what they are. On Xbox, which is console I am on, you want to do special, you want to do hunter or shadow, either one, we'll just set it as shadow for now. Your min price is 10k. Your max price is 16k. And your max buy now, you want to set it at 15. The reason why you set it like this is it refreshes every time you do it. So you set, you then search, basically, and then you'll refresh it afterwards. And what you want to do is go to the 59th minute. You're going to go to the end of it, and you just want to, so there's one hour, four minutes there. We'll come back on ourselves. And you just want to see the cards that are here at that time. So now the first question that I got asked is how do I know the prices of these players? First way, no point pretending that it's not, is I trade with these cards. So I know re relatively what these cards sell for. And the more you do this method, the more you will learn the price of these cards, okay? So that's the first thing to, to note. However, a lot of you guys were saying, well, I don't know the prices, how can I learn? And for this, Footbin is your best friend. So let's, as an example, look at, I don't know, let's look at this party. Let's look at this, this Thomas party, right? So what we'll do is we'll go over to Footbin and we'll search for party's card, okay? And um, we'll click on his 84 inform. So no, this isn't going to be a good deal for reference. It won't be a good deal on that for a fact. Search party when he wants to load. And he sells for 22k. So we know that that party that you see there is not a good deal. Okay? But what you can do, because he's got bids on him, is add in transfer targets. And so we're adding transfer targets and that'll be that. We'll refresh the search, see if anything new comes up. Again, I'm doing this middle of the day. I, I talked about timings, the best time to do it in a second. But middle of the day, you're not going to get huge amounts. But And I know I'm, I'm in a Discord call currently with my server. The people on Discord, so I know they are all having it out right now for deals. Uh, but this Kleber, for example, he's a 79 mate Kleber. One thing you can do is you can check for, uh, Footbin, which is probably a lot of time the quickest if you want to snap onto a deal, but you can also compare price. So this Kleber here, for example, there's one for 20k and there's no others. The reason I 
I'm not sure about this Kaber. It's because he's got another inform. So I'm going to go over and show you this now on desktop. We've got Kaber. He's got an 82 rated as well. So I'm going to search Kaber. So this is an 82 card. And his 82 card is currently selling for 12k, right? And his 79 card is cheaper because there's less on the market. We're more expensive because there's less on the market. So for me, Kaber's not someone that I'd be too bothered about buying. He's 14 and a half. No, he's 14 and a half for his 82. His, eight, his other one's not a price. Footprint's glitching out. It's 12k. It's fine. Um, but Kaber for me is not, is not, it's not a good deal. I, I can see that just by looking at him and going, okay, cool, that's not all right. But again, with a lot of these cards, just be mindful that realistically, I would always try and go for the second in form. Guys have got under informs. I'm not a massive fan of trading with. There are exceptions to this. For example, Mars is still relatively meta for you to do. So, so Mars wouldn't be too bad a shout. But I would just be mindful that you don't really want to be buying into too many of the cards that have got new cards because that holds their price down to a certain degree. Um, but this Borella, for example, what you can simply do on a lot of your cards is just compare price. Look at what they're selling for in on around and say, okay, cool. Look at what they're selling for with Shadows. So there's some Shadows in here for 19k, 20k, 20k. But there aren't that many shadows here, realistically, on this guy that are massive, massive undercuts. He's 16k at the moment, and there's one for 13k. Would I buy this one? Probably not. But down at 15, I probably would. One simplistic rule you can have. One simplistic rule is if you search a card. Let's say we're going to go and search. There's an 84 Ducore that I can see right now. Let's say we're going to go and search Ducore, right? His 84 card. So again. There's another exception. I do trade with 84 Decore. It's not a bad one to buy. His 86 is better in my opinion, but 84 is fine. I know now Decore sells without a Shadow or Hunter, just a standard for 34k on him, okay? So if I see one with a Shadow on him for 34k or below, I buy. Even within 1,000 coins, it's usually a good buy. It's usually always a good buy. And that's how you start to learn prices, okay? The more you do it, the more you learn prices. And that's the most important thing. It's about building up your own knowledge to the point where you don't rely upon Footbin for every single card. One thing that a lot of you said to me is, oh, I keep missing these cards. Trust me, when you first start, you're going to keep missing these cards. I still do now. Everyone still does now. The most important rule here is if you are not sure, do not buy. It's better not to pick up the deal than it is to pick up a bad deal. Because if you don't pick up the deal, you're not losing coins. If you pick up a bad deal, you're losing coins. So always be mindful of that. On PS, your filter is slightly different. Your, your filter on PS is about 13k. You can move the, the 13k and the 16k. You can move it up a little bit if you want to... Give yourself more wiggle room. PS4, you don't really need to do that. You get a lot of deals. Xbox, you'll probably need to move it around a little bit uh, to get good deals. But that's essentially how you work out. That's the point deal there. Didn't change it up. But 13K is what you want to be doing. That's essentially how you work out if it's a good buy or not, okay? So summing that up, simplistic rules are always try and trade with the most recent inform unless the card's got demand. So if it's a Premier League player, if it's relatively meta, that's okay. It's not necessarily a bad problem. Just be mindful that Having trading with other informs limits the amount of value you can take out of those cards and limits the amount that they will rise. But that's how you look. That's that's the, the first rule. Second rule: use footbin. If the price is within, within one thousand, it's usually a good buy. Third rule is check the card itself. When you search these cards and you go, okay, cool. I'm gonna look for. Let's go look at Hunter quickly, for example. Let's change it up to Hunter this time. When you go into Hunter and you go, okay, cool. Do I want this card? Check the card itself. Go to the card itself. So this I use the price, for example. I know if this is too expensive for already. But just check the price itself. So you see one sitting for 25 there. Like, yeah, but, but he's in around 25. But you've got Hunter there for 27. So realistically, that's not a good deal. You're not going to make many coins off of that at 28k. In fact, you're going to make no coins, realistically. So you know it's not a good deal. But check the card itself. If you see loads of Hunters and Shadows flooded at the buy price you're buying that, don't bother. But if you see one or two cards in and around that price and the rest are quite a bit expen more expensive, buy in. Buy in. So now you've bought the cards, you start to, the, to, buy the, to buy the cards. A lot of you ask me about selling the cards, okay? Now, the first rule is always be selling something on the market. You never know when it's going to sell. So always have cards on the market. If you are going out and you're not going to be on, list your cards up. If you're sitting playing the game, list your cards up. I cannot stress that enough. Always list your cards up. If you're on the game, do it an hour at a time. It allows you to move with the market. If the market comes up, you can make more coins. If the market comes down, yours isn't going to sell if you keep listing at the same price. Move with the market. That's the most important thing. However, a lot of you said that the best time to, to sell, when is the best time to sell? And I said it in the last video, and I'll repeat it now for you guys. Overnight selling is the best, okay? I cannot stress that enough. With the website, when we have our buy and sell prices on the website, they the, the best time and the reason why our buy prices set the way they are and the sell prices are, are the sell prices 
will guarantee you that overnight, nine times out of 10. There are very few cards that will not sell overnight so long as your price is right. Don't be that guy that tries to list a 30K profit. It's not going to happen. Be realistic in your profit. That's, that's the most important thing. But sell overnight. Another question that I was asked is, how do I know what a good profit is? And for me, the market leads that. So if you look at this IOZ Perez again, let's just compare price on him. He's at 28 there. He's at minimum 25 as a sell realistically is what he's selling for. But there were hunters in and around, quite a few in and around the 30k mark. So to me, that says the market demand for this card is about 30k of a hunter, give or take. That may raise slightly overnight. But his, the market price for that IOZ Perez is realistically going to be about 30k. So you know you're probably not going to be getting anything more than 30k for that card. So when you're, when you're thinking about what the profit is, the profit is what you make of it and it's what you buy into it at. If you buy that Perez at 20k and you sell him for 27k, you made a good chunk of profit there. You made nearly 5,000 coins profit off that one card. And for me, my mentality is I, I try to make 5,000 profit, 5, coins profit a card when they're above sort of 20, 30, 40k. At the bottom end, at the 10,000 price, 15,000 price, making 2, 3k from that isn't bad at all. That's not a problem. But there is no answer to what is a good profit. It's just what you want to make and what you want to buy in at. I know some guys in my Discord are very selective on their buys and will only buy for 5k profit because they're like, well, it's not worth my time otherwise. I'm a little less selective in terms of I, I change mine based upon the prices I'm buying them at. The bigger the, the spend, the more profit you clearly want to make. As an example, I picked up that Harry Kane the other day and made 30k profit on him because I spent nearly 100k on him. So I was like, well, I want to make 30k profit on this guy because I want to make it worth my while the coins I'm putting in. Because I also know if I put 100k into silvers, I'm taking 50, 60, 70k out of that. So that's something that I think about when it comes down to, to my, my profit margins with that. It's the more you spend, the more you want your profit to be, essentially. The next question I was asked, and this is the, probably the most important question, is when is the best time to buy? First thing with silver special, sorry, is you can trade them anytime you want, but the market will move, okay? I find the best deals pop up after six o'clock. That's what I find usually. And the best time to sell them is overnight, but you can trade them anytime. But you have to be alert to the fact that the market will change. I want to show you Ducore, for example. Um, and here, this is his, we want to look at 86 here with a shadow on it. If I just look at 86 full stop. Let's go special, let's clear that off and let's go to 70k. So now we are into Weekend League and Abdullah Dekore's 86 card for a lot of the week has been in and around the 70k mark, okay? When we've been picking him up, we've been up at 70, 75's max. For now, we're going to Weekend League. He's no longer at that price. His 86 card, as you can see here, the lowest I can see at the moment is 81, if I'm not mistaken. There might be a slightly lower one here. But no, 81. So he's gained 10k going into Weekend League. So that means now, if I'm going to buy this card, I'm adjusting for that fact. I'm adjusting for the fact that as there's demand there for Weekend League, I need to adjust what I'm doing throughout the week. So early in the week, fine, yeah. Sundays, I pick him up for 70k, no problem. But Thursdays and Fridays and Saturdays when people are buying for weekend league, I'm thinking, right, well, I've got to be picking him up now around the 80k mark. And if I show you it now, again, this is why Footbin is your best friend when it comes to checking prices. Because if we go to Abdullah Dekori's 86 card, which is loading now, what you want to be looking at is always the price here. So 81k, as you've just seen, we just saw him for 81k on the market. But throughout the week here, you'll see there are peaks and troughs and fluctuations. You see the 70Ks like, and 67Ks, like the average price here was 64K apparently, which isn't necessarily true. Realistically, he was, at, he was at higher than that. But he comes up again, and then now today he's up again, and the average price is 74. That will continue to climb as we go on. But Footbridge your friend, because you can go, okay, cool, I can see what he's doing. I can see what he's doing on the market, so I know that there is a peak and trough. So when I come to Sunday, this is building up that market knowledge for you. When I come to Sunday, I know he'll come down in price. So I can buy him cheap on a Sunday if I see him. Or I can buy him more expensive on a Thursday. And so when you want to, when you want to do it, when you want it, the best times to buy them, there is no best time to buy. I can't stress that enough for special cards. There is no best time to buy. It's just changing your mindset and changing your buy prices and sell prices based upon the market conditions. And you will learn that by doing it. I'm, in all honesty, you learn more by making losses. You will always learn more trading by making losses than you will by just continuing doing well because losses make you remember. You will remember you made a 5k loss on Decore so you'll know what to pay for him. And that's really, really, really like the crux of this whole thing. It is a learning process. But again, you, you could go and buy in an, in an evening 20 of these cards easily. You can do it. And I promise you that now. I've got guys in my Discord doing it all the time. 20 of these cards per evening at an average of 5k, 5K profit is 100,000 coins an, an evening, right? That means weekly you can be making 700,000 coins with very little effort. You're never going to get that sort of value from FIFA points. You're never, ever going to get that sort of value for FIFA points. And so you've just got to learn. You've just got to learn how it works and the best ways to do it. 
the final thing you all asked me about was fluctuations on these cards. Now, we speak about fluctuations a little bit in terms of how we trade with these cards, right? So we pick them up at six o'clock, they rise overnight. Then we pick them up at six o'clock and they rise overnight and it comes down, pick up, rise, and it, that, that, that's, that's fine. But a lot of you guys are saying, well, what about fluctuations for these cards that aren't Hunt, Hunters and Shadows? And yes, that is a viable transfer, like trading method, a viable trading method with special cards. The decor I've just shown you throughout the week, he's changed by about 10,000 coins over the course of a week. So now I've come Sunday, you want to pick this guy up. Now I'm not saying to you now, go and buy him at 70k, I don't think that's the right price. The market's only going to come down as, as the game progresses, especially if we do get a promo that you tend to bring the market down in other cards a little bit. But what it does mean is that, let's say, for example, Sunday comes, and you know that that decor rate, on average, has been 81k all weekend, okay? You go, okay, brilliant, it's been 81k. You then start to see him in sell-off a weekend league drop to 70k. You watch that, and you keep an eye on that 70k. And then you suddenly start seeing 65s and 63s and 60s. At that point, you're like, well, actually, I can buy in here, because if I buy in at 60k and I do hold these for... Let's say I buy into, I don't know, 10 decor rays at 60k. You need him to get back to about 70, 75k. 75k makes you over 10k profit a card. If you get back to 70k, that makes you about 6.5k profit per card. Now, if you bought 10 of those and 6.5k and they've just been sat in transfer pile, 65,000 coins for doing very little is brilliant. But moreover than that, if you can pick them up with shadows and hunters on them at that sell-off point and hold them until the market rises later in the week, you're going to make even more coins. Because right now with a shadow, I don't know what it's saying for a shadow at the moment. Let's have a little look. Um, the decor special chemistry style shadow. Let's go shadow. So it's 86 is currently selling for 90k minimum like on the transfer pile right now with a shadow. Now, does that mean he's going to sell at 90k? Possibly, possibly not. What you can do is let you go into the decor itself and add into transfer targets. And see if he sells. And then just keep an eye on him, basically. But um, with a shadow, he obviously has an extended value. He has a much bigger value with a shadow. So you, 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 there, straight away, you've got 13k worth of value. Because that's what shadows tend to cost. So if you pick him up with shadows and sell off at that price, you'll, you'll make bank. You'll make good coins. And so a lot of you were saying, well, is it, is it possible to look at only 10 cards? And yes, it 100% is. If that's the way you want to trade and you want to learn the price of 10 specific specials and buy into them every Sunday and sell them every weekend league, that is a viable trading method. And it's still a very, very good trading method. And there's nothing wrong with that. I would argue that it would limit you in terms of coins you could make during the week because those coins are just sat there and those coins could be invested into other stuff. But if you're the sort of guy who doesn't want to be on FIFA 24-7, I have stuff to do. I mean, at the moment, it's difficult because no one can go out and do stuff. But if you're the kind of guy that wants to do that and hasn't got time, that's a brilliantly viable trading method. So yes, go ahead and do that. When I first started trading specials this year, I was trading on those fluctuations. That's what I did. Now I know the market like inside out. I can start buying into more and buying into others. And that's, that's, that's exactly why I say to you guys, just be flexible with your approach. Change up what I teach you as well. When I teach you stuff on this, adapt it to your own methods, to your own time, to what way the ways you can do it. It's so important. Hopefully this video has cleared up for you. I did have about 30 special cards when I start, first started recording this video, but I didn't like the initial start of the recording of this video, so I completely re-recorded it to show you guys. But I'm going to be continuing to test the website out, so I'll continue to show you this, you guys this stuff. Um, but just be mindful, the special cards are higher risk than, for example, silvers, but they are less work. And I say this all the time, it's less work, so you have to balance up. If you've got the time, if you haven't got the time, how you want to trade, but there's a lot of profit to be made. But it is going to be the end of the video. If you are new around here, please do subscribe down below. Click the like button. Check out foottrading.co.uk. I cannot stress it enough. It is a brilliant, brilliant site. Brilliant tools on there and people are loving it. So do get involved. And if you want to watch me do this live, come over to Twitch. Watch it live. You will learn a huge amount over there. You can join the Discord. Nearly 600 people in there, like I say. They will be able to help you out like we all help each other out. But that's going to be the end of the video. I will see you soon. Peace out.